And yes. So, this group is now going to move. So, here's where the problem begins. So, they're going straight towards Ainz's group. And this guy's going to drop a pretty blatant hint. Crimson Flash of Garrick's Mercenaries. And you remember them mentioning the name Marissa before. It should be very obvious how you recruit her. But she does start out as an enemy. And I'm not even sure if she has Mathis Syndrome or not. I would say that it wouldn't be out of character if she did. Okay, some of those Axemen are getting dangerously close. That's why I had, uh, had the... Axe Reaver. Why'd you go for Joshua, of all people? Oh well, doesn't really matter. You finally got hit. And you missed anyway, wow. Yeah, Garrick is so awesome that even Lance uses a had nothing to him. Absolutely nothing. The lower group does have no healers, so you will need to watch out for that. It might not be a bad idea to send a healer their way. And here's where things get annoying, because one, you have to make sure not to kill Marissa. Two, you need to make sure that Garrick doesn't get hit by that sleep staff. If he does, then you might as well reset, because recruiting Marissa suddenly got a lot more difficult. More bandits are spawning. So yeah, keep an eye on the green range here. Definitely keep an eye on that green range. Oh yeah, I had the Steel Sword and Kyle. But yeah, if you thought Garrick was great against Lance users, wait till you see him against Axe users. And there's the Mercenary Crew animation. Probably the precursor to Ike's Aether animation, now I think about it. Ike is pretty much a mercenary slash hero in everything but name. Oh. Right. I don't like that. Uh, you know, normally I'd have Ainz go ahead and do it, but... You don't have a, yeah, you don't have a hand axe. You do have a hand axe, but uh, it's dancing time. Just because I want Garrick to get as much experience as possible. Yes, he is definitely going to be on my endgame team, because he is one of my favourite characters in this whole game. And like I said, my favourite Ogma character in the whole series. I mean, they're all pretty awesome. Raven's great, Holland's great, the original Ogma is great. But, I don't know, there's just something about Garrick that's just really awesome. The fact that he starts out solid, ends up solid... His amazing design, the nickname the Desert Tiger, it's just everything about him is just so cool. Oh, and his amazing constitution, that is also... I kind of feel bad for this guy. I feel like he's really terrified, like a terrified new recruit who doesn't even want to fight. Because seriously, he's not even moving, I don't get that. Okay, now I could have Irons just shoot that guy, but I'd kind of rather Garrett get the kill. Tana, though. What can Tana do? Well, obviously, Tana doesn't want to go over that way. Uh, huh. I mean, Ross is heading this way regard. You know what? I'm just going to have Tana double back and finish this guy off. I'm so sorry. I uh, I want to leave that guy alive because of my head cannon, but uh, unfortunately, I need the experience. Ross is going to get moving, and now... This guy, I don't think moves. The other guy does move, but I don't think he does. So we've got a lot of sword users here, but we do have to watch out because there are also a lot of axe users incoming and also a lance user. Now these... Actually, are they going to double Amelia? They might not double Amelia. I mean, Amelia's not going to kill them quickly, but... Uh... Okay, you have a javelin. I don't remember that. Only one use left in that lance. I'm gonna go ahead and equip a fresh one just in case. Joshua's already pretty strong. Okay, where do I plan to have Natasha go? Because that will dictate where Joshua goes. As for Kyle. Okay, you can't reach that forest down there. Kyle's gonna go on his way to relieve Ainz's force, like uh, was the original plan. That guy's got a hand axe. That guy also has a hand axe. The first couple of bandits here bo uh, both have hand axes. Okay. Yep, 
yeah, I'm gonna have Natasha just go ahead and heal Franz up a little bit and just put Franz on the front lines here. Here I just like to tank the approach of enemies slowly. Then when the bandits arrive, I should hopefully be done with everything else and be able to freely use the Axe Reaver. No, you are standing next to her. And you're just gonna go ahead and equip that, and uh, I might as well just... Remember that there's a free space down there for any ranged enemies to approach. Well, okay, you haven't moved. Just stay on hand down there. I moved Irons onto that Ballista once in practice. That turned out to be a very, very bad idea because the Ballista actually has a weight stat. And that's the only explanation because a bunch of enemies that normally wouldn't have doubled him doubled him and he got cut to pieces brutally. So my only conclusion is the Ballista obviously must have a weight stat that you can't really see, but it's obviously still present. Well, at least the enemies are missing with 70s now. Not that that would have made much of a difference. Hello, idiot who attacked Garrick. Yeah, Garrick is one of the... Remember how I said before there's only one sword user who can make good use of blades? That's Garrick. He's pretty much the only one with enough con to do that. Resistance. It's kind of weird, but extra strength is definitely important. Okay, I need to watch out, though, because that stupid priest is coming. I hate that guy. I really hate that guy. Pretty good evasion there, actually. No doubling on either side, though. Kind of would have liked strength, but that's okay. But now the axe users are incoming. And there's an archer down there who's probably going to go for the ballista. And some more axe users are incoming. At this point, I probably want to pull back. In a practice run, Garrick did get in range of the Sleep Priest, and it missed, but I don't want to take my chances. So, so here's an annoying thing. The range on this doesn't seem to be taking into account the fact that he can potentially reach here. Because there's an enemy in this spot, I don't think it's actually calculating the range from there. So... It's, we know it's five spaces though, because it says here magic over two, but he's got five magic and it seems like it's having a range of five spaces. In fact, now that I think about it, uh, is there even any way that I can get Garrick out of sleep range? And it's always going to target, actually wait, Tennis has the lower resistance. Yeah, hit rates for status staffs are all based on the resistance stat. Which makes silence incredibly useless in this game, but uh, you may or may not be seeing that later. It's pretty stupid how useless silence is in this game. It's really only useful for grinding experience on... Uh... See, now is a time where I would like to be able to swap Franz and Amelia's positions without having to... Uh... Without using up either of their turns, but uh, that is not to be, so I will have to do this. I was expecting that to miss for a second, but it didn't. Okay, we do have a bunch of axe users incoming, and I don't want to use the axe reaper yet, because there's a sword user still in play. You can't even reach the, uh... Okay, two of you have hand axes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's just finish you off, then. And now I need to rush in and take out as many of those axemen as possible. Which shouldn't be too bad, actually. No. Okay, which one has the hand axe? You do. Actually, you both do. Okay, let's just go for you first, because I've got the high hit rate. Had a feeling that would hit. Sometimes you can just tell. One down, several to go. And I have to use the Killing Edge, I hate when that happens. And no crits either. And there's that one experience you needed to get to level 15. Thank you for strength, that's actually really good. Okay, there's a Lance user there, with the Javelin. Actually hope Joshua will be able to survive all this. Mm. 
might actually need Seth to take out someone. And alternatively, Kyle can actually go here and kill that guy even with a regular sword. Hmm. Maybe I need to change my plans regarding where Kyle should be positioned. Might not be a bad idea to have some people down here too, because there's a really weird reinforcement trigger later on in this chapter. It's probably the main point of difficulty here that I'm worried about. So... Okay. Erica might be able to... Uh, she's not going to do a pretty good job of fighting that guy. Unless... would have been nice there, but I'll take that. And let's just rapier you. And now I think I will need to have Seth clear the way a little bit. I will want to try clearing out as many enemies here before recruiting Marissa. That sounds weird, but there's actually a very good reason for... I don't want to waste that rune sword, but I also don't want to a lance against an axe user because it's a little unreliable. But Seth can't double that guy, so I'm going to have to go for the risk. Yeah, let's do that. I don't want to waste the rune sword. Oh yeah, the rune sword, so you're not going to know this until I use it, and I'm going to try and avoid using it because it's a pretty valuable weapon, but it also heals you. It's basically Nosferatu in a sword. also existed back in FE7, and then in um, the GameCube slash Wii games, it inexplicably became light-based. Well, I mean, there is, there is a reason for that, kind of, in that Nosferatu was not called Nosferatu in Japanese, it was called Rezaya, and it actually started out life as light magic. Well, not exactly light magic, it was... Um, well, I mean, if you've played Echoes, you know now. It's, um... Gaiden... Gaiden Priest Magic. Gaiden Cleric Magic, actually, but, uh... Yeah. There weren't any male priests in Gaiden, I just realised. Okay, so Marissa's there. The problem is, I don't have any Restore Staves. Which means if Garrett gets hit by sleep, I'm pretty much done. And it's got, like, a 30-ish chance of hitting him. So, this is really, really problematic. I could try... Hmm. Oh, this could be really, really dumb. This could be really, really dumb. But on the other hand, it could save me a bit. I'm gonna just blockade them off with irons here. Being locked into two range, that one soldier in front of him is effectively roadblocking everyone else, because... He's probably just going to stay there, and that means that none of the others can move any further forward, and that effectively roadblocks... Yeah, see how this guy's range just expanded because there's another space that he can move to? So, as long as Garrick is around here, Isha, I don't need to worry about the sleep staff. So hopefully Marissa will get closer, and then I'll be able to recruit her. Then clean up the rest of them, especially that stupid priest. Uh, right. I actually think Ross needs the Dancer boost a little bit more. But yeah, enjoy this dance animation because I'm going to be skipping it in future chapters. I do like how across the GBA games, all the, all, like, all of the dancers are actually quite different in terms of personality and their uh, general appearance and, I guess, musical style to them. I just hope this guy is not smart enough to run and then have the priest go there. That'd be really irritating. But, like I was saying, like you had Laylam in FE, in FE6, who was pretty much your typical Genki girl, bubbly dancer. Pretty much your average um, one, basically. Then you had Ninian, who was much more quiet and reserved and had really calm, serene music. And now you have Tethys, who's... Um, yeah, who has sort of an Arabic theme to her and uh, is also quite different again. Ah, yes, you did exactly what I hoped you'd do. Good. 
The Sniper Roadblock! That actually worked. Can't believe it did, but uh, I guess I'll take credit for it. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, the, the blades are annoying on anyone not named Garrick. Now, if that's... So okay, well, that missed anyway. But if that soldier moves, I don't think he does, though. Yeah, the guy with the door key just stays there. You didn't even use your staff. I mean, I'm very glad for that, but still. Okay, yeah. This is going to be a bit of a problem. Okay, so let's shoot this guy. I hate wasting the silver bow, but I'm going to have to. And now... It's just these two are in the way of that stupid priest. You do need to be very careful, though, when you recruit Marissa. There is a reason for this. But first, let's go ahead and talk with Garrick, which unfortunately means Garrick can't actually attack anyone this turn, which is a shame. But let's do this. I like this conversation, too. This is a pretty good recruitment conversation. So, yeah, the guild kind of messed up, and turns out that Marissa ended up on the wrong side. I'd rather you retreat too, because you've got a very high critical rate. That's what I want too. <laughs> I love this. Marissa's just like, right, done. And I love this too. You know what this will do to your reputation, right? Yep. <laughs> and that's it. Marissa's with us. So this is Marissa. The Crimson Flash. Okay, from a pure objective standpoint, Marissa is basically just a worse version of Joshua who joins later. Her only real use is if Joshua died or something. Despite that, I do really like her as a character and I often find myself using her, so let's discuss her merits. Marissa is another Myrmidon, thus she focuses on consistently doubling things, dodge tanking, and getting a lot of critical hits. At dodge tanking, she is better than Joshua because she has much better luck overall. However, she is far squishier than he is. And if you thought Joshua's strength growth was a bit shaky, hers is even worse. In fact, in the Japanese version it was 25, which was really bad. She also has worse constitution than Joshua, so she can't use steel swords as effectively. Again, I hate how the constitution system is biased against female characters, but uh, yeah, that's just how it is. I will say she's definitely worth recruiting for the Shamshir she comes with alone. That's a pretty great weapon, and it's a pretty rare one too. You usually only find them in secret shops. Marissa got a nice all-round buff to her growth rates in the English version. She gained 5 to her strength, skill, speed, and, weirdly enough, resistance. Marissa shares the same promoted options as Joshua, but I think the real gimmick with her is you're really meant to make her an assassin. Swordmaster is still a decent option, but unlike Joshua, Marissa is not likely to go above 20 strength. So Assassin's low strength cap is not that much of a hindrance to her. And going Assassin will give her extra utility with lockpicks, as well as giving her the silencer skill, which definitely makes up for her low attack power. Swordmaster does give a slightly better promotion gain to strength though, so if you want a little bit more strength initially, that class might be better. Both are decent, but I find that when I am using Marissa, I'm usually also using Joshua, and I tend to make him a Swordmaster, so I like to make her an Assassin to differentiate the two. Assassin definitely fits her overall stat build better than it does Joshua or Colum. And even lore-wise, it makes more sense for her to promote to Assassin. And this Shams here is pretty cool. It's basically the Wu Dao from FE6 and 7. Did it exist in FE6? I actually don't think it did. But anyway, just, um, they changed it to an Arabic slash Persian based weapon because, uh, that's uh, where the sword masters are from in this region, not an Asian inspired nation. But yeah, only Myrmidon sword masters and assassins can use it. And I think Erica can use it too, actually. But, uh, yeah, other than that, it is pretty restricted. I really like Marissa as a character, but uh, stat-wise, she is pretty much just a worse version of Joshua who joins later, which is kind of unfortunate. And that archer stops me from doing what I want to do, and that's sending in you, boosted by Tevis, to attack the stupid priest. Well, 
I could do that, but I actually might be necessary. I might want to get Marissa out of here. You'll see why shortly, in about a turn or so. So, this is really bizarre. And I'm not sure if there are many cases of this in the series, but recruiting Marissa is actually a reinforcement trigger for the enemy. They must have some kind of anti-betrayal countermeasures. I don't know, but anyway, we're going to be seeing lots of really strong reinforcements spawning from all over the map in the next turn or so. All because we recruited Marissa. Like I said, it's pretty bizarre, but that's how it works. Having Tana around here might not be such a bad thing, though I will need irons for something too. So, let's just clean up these guys, and like I said before, these guys are going to take a long time to get to the fray. How many of you have hand axes? Don't think any of you do, actually. Yeah, none of you do. So yeah, my plan here is to actually stick someone here with the axe reaver and just, or Erica, with just any sword, and just go to town on the bandits. Because at this point, we've just got a bunch of random bandits left. That will be changing very soon. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. And that's in support range of Seth too, so that's the most you'll be doing. I'm pretty sure that's in support range of Seth. Let's just try something. A little risky bringing Naomi to this chapter, but... Let's see what we can do with her. And just use the regular steel sword here. This is kind of our last breather for a little while, because soon some tough reinforcements are going to spawn. I know I already said that, but just reiterating. And these guys are really slow if Kyle is doubling them. I'm very glad these coming reinforcements are not ambush spawns, because that would be even worse. Yeah, they very, very thankfully got rid of ambush spawns uh, out, uh, past FE6. Another reason why FE6 is evil. No, oh, I suppose I can lower you to the perfect HP for someone else to finish you off. Yeah, Seth is starting to fall behind in the doubling department. Of course, if you've been using him a lot, he'll have gained enough speed to actually double things by this point, and then he's really, really broken. But, let's see. I want to heal Franz. But I also want to get rid of this... Ah, uh, ah. Oh. Ah, oh, well, the... Actually... Alternatively, Luke can just kill you. Okay, yeah, to, I, I guess, maximize enemy kills this turn. Sounds like I'm going for a power score in Advance Wars in that case, but yeah. <laughs> Always was weird how the power score worked, at least in the GBA games. And how the game, how it works. It being maximum, like, highest number of enemies killed in a single turn. All sorts of times like these, where one use weapons are great. I only needed one use of that anyway. And now I'm gonna firebomb you. Need to make sure to make room in my inventory for the door key, unless I want to risk colon. And it's at this point that I should be worrying about the ballistas, I just realized. Soldiers aren't at this point in the game. And let's put one of those back. Like I said, ballistas. It's annoying that you can't check exactly what type of ballista they are, but something tells me one of them is a killer ballista. I'm not 100% sure, but I get the feeling that one of them is a killer ballista. And killer ballistas are always very annoying to... Actually, Erica's rapier might not be a bad idea to have on the front lines now. But remember to heal you. Of course, which counts as the front lines is going to change lines. I think we have one more turn until it happens, though, or I could be wrong. But yeah, the bandits are still going over the mountains. I mostly just want to clear them out before the reinforcement spawn happens. Oh hey, someone who didn't get double bite Kyle. Okay, let's hope that Garrick does well here. Well, not killing that guy means that at the very least uh, Garrick gets attacked by less people. Ow. 
Okay, this could be a problem, please. Oh, of course you go for Garrick. This music. This music, I find, is one of the biggest cases of soundtrack dissonance ever. Good it missed. It's just such a soothing, relaxing song that you will associate with horrible, horrible things happening. Especially later on in the maps, because sleep is far from the worst status staff in this game. There is much, much worse than that. Much worse. Oh boy. So yeah, big reinforcement barrage. A ranger from down here, and a bunch of cavalry, all with lances. This guy doesn't have, doesn't have a sword though, so he's just a bow user. A bunch of Pegasus Knights and a Falcon Knight from down here. And some more Pegasus Knights from up here. Is it just me though, or are these the slowest Pegasus Knights in the history of everything? 10 speed on a level 10 Pegasus Knight? Really? It just seems... 9 speed on a level 10 Pegasus Knight. Just, they're so slow. But... Here's the thing, that ballista is very, very heavy, and I don't want irons to get slaughtered. If he gets in that, I don't know if he can also move in the same turn. And even if he does, uh, even if I try and use tethys, tethys would probably be able to get attacked by a bunch of stupid things, but I don't like that priest. That priest needs to go... Don't do that, that would be a bad idea. Oh yeah, you could technically promote Garrick right now if you wanted to, but uh, I'm just going to hold off on that. Don't think Tana's defense is quite high enough to take on all of these Pegasus Knights at once. It will be later in the game, but not yet. Might have to use the Sniper Roadblock strategy again. Because I kind of want that archer gone to clear the skies for Tana. Please miss, thank you. And remember how I said having Ross here might really, really help? Some of you have javelins, don't you? No, none of you do, okay. Pretty sure a lot of them are going to double roll. Actually, maybe not with their speed that low. And no matter where Ross goes, he's going to probably get hit by a lot of them. But there's Slim Land. Oh, right! This one, I remember. Yeah. So, you need to steal this talisman if you want it. I'm going to resign myself to getting that now, because Column's all the way over the other end of the map, and I don't want to leave that Pegasus Knight alive. I mean, I could try, but I don't really fancy my chances of getting that, so I might as well avoid that, but... A 12 attack power... Enough crit that Ross negates it. Not gonna double him. I... Uh, this is kinda worrying, but I'm gonna actually try putting Ross here. Don't equip any weapon that lowers your speed, though. Because that wouldn't go well. So now let's see which areas are safe for Tevis. Which is not many, actually. But... Oh, actually, that's not as bad of an idea as I thought it would be. Because Ayn's going to at least shoot that guy, although he probably won't double him. 27 attack, uh, you have 4 defense. I do exactly 23, don't I? Yeah, I probably do 23. Uh. Yeah, that wouldn't really help much. Marissa, meanwhile, will just go where the bandits are, but she will want to avoid these guys. So I'm fighting on 3 fronts now. So I either stick Erica over here, or I just stick Amelia here and use the Axe Reaver, which I might end up doing. Except that Ballista's in range of Amelia there. Which should hopefully not be that bad. Actually, how heavy is that? 11. Drops your speed by 1, which shouldn't be really that terrible. We'll see. For the moment, don't equip that, because you're not in, any, you're not in range of any Axe users. Like I said, I wanted this area clear, because I'm going to want to lure some of these guys. How healthy is Seth right now? He could use a little bit of a top-up. 
so let's go ahead and do that. Want to take out the cavalry quickly, and for that I might need to enlist the aid of Erica's rapier. No, I suppose just having the Iron Lance here is fine. Finish you. Now the area is clear. Also, yeah, this is a Seas chapter, so you don't have to take your time fighting all the enemies if you want. You can just rush straight to the throne now. But I like to get as much experience out of my maps as I can. Okay, Seth, let's hope you're up for this. They all have Steel Lances, don't they? Yeah. 19 attack against his 11 defense. Uh, let's just have Seth go around here-ish. That's in range of a couple of them, but not in range of the Ranger. <laughs> range of the Ranger! And Erica will be going here, just in case. As will Kyle. Now I need to just think about who's going to handle these guys. Girls. Pegasus Knights are some of the very rare times in a fire game you see generic female enemies. This is going to seem crazy, but I've got Joshua, I guess. You loot are going to try and take on them, and then I guess Naomi... If, uh, she could try and fight some Pegasus Knights? Tana might not be a bad idea either. The thing is that I might like her down here to fight some of these Pegasus Knights. Can any of you move further than the Falcon Knight? I don't think so, actually. Yeah, for now, I might want to leave this, although, now that archer... Uh, actually, there's a new archer in town. But, having... The question is whether I wait until these guys are lured away first, because I don't want these ones charging towards Tana. And I especially don't want her to fall asleep. It's unlikely that will happen, but if it does, it would not end well. I suppose I could just javelin you from here. Actually. Provided this hits. It did, okay. I could do a brother-sister tag team on this guy. But I would not like for Teddy's to fall asleep. That would be bad. And yet more dancing. Actually, it's a time like this when Shaw Strike might be a good thing. Uh, like, oh, I shouldn't have spoke too soon, really? Note to self, never say anything vaguely resembling that statement again. Once again, I'm doing the sniper roadblock trick. I wonder who that priest is going to go after, though. Okay, at least one of them actually attacked. One damage! <laughs> and you get one shot at in return! Our Pegasus Knights, ladies and gentlemen! You... These... Pablo seriously must have hired the cheap Pegasus Knights. These are probably the cheapest Pegasus Knights they had available. Because look how pathetically bad they are! Seriously, these are some of the worst Pegasus Knights I've ever seen. I mean, I'm glad Pablo hired the cheap Pegasus Knights, but it's just... It's pretty hilarious how terrible they are. Meanwhile, Seth is being his usual self, taking out a couple of enemies. And leveling up, which is nice. And there's speed. There's a lot of helpful stats, actually. Okay, you're at least slightly more impressive. Also, Falcon Knights have pretty cool animations in this game. <laughs> it's kind of funny how 
the enemy Falconites have bizarrely pink-tinted wings. Oh, hi there. I'm on a mountain. Yeah, you probably can't hit me. Okay, I need to keep Colm away from you. I know you're the worst Pegasites in existence, but, uh... Six! Six. Really? I would have really eaten my words if that had hit. But yeah, six. There are only three uses on that Sleep Staff, and it's very unlikely he'll ever drop the Sleep Staff. In fact, he's probably always going to drop that Torch Staff. But, let's see. Oh, Tana's not quite in range to fight the Falcon Knight. You are getting doubled. Yeah, you are clearly the worst Pegasus Knights in all of existence. How much damage is that? You're getting doubled by... You're getting doubled by a 5-con character with a Javelin. You are, seriously, the absolute worst Pegasus Knight in all of, all of the existences to ever exist. Let's just, I didn't need to worry about these guys at all. I, I was actually worried about these reinforcements, believe it or not, but, uh, yeah. Fortunately, you're just short of doing it. And Teddy's won't be able to dance for you then. Oh, right! You're getting weighed down massively by that. That's why everyone's doubling you. That makes sense. Hmm. Uh, I kind of feel like it's better if I just get rid of this guy before he becomes a problem. Because he could become a pretty major problem. He only needs to hit with that once, and uh, I don't have any restore staff, so whoever's hit by that is going to be out of action for a while. But yeah, the music that plays when using status staffs in this game. Thank you for strength there. It's just... And finally, you can use Axe Reapers. It's just a pretty terrifying song for something that just sounds so... <laughs> serene and peaceful. Well, I only need to hit you once. There we go. I still stand by my statement. You are the worst Falcon Knight ever. Uh, yeah, Garrick's speed growth can be a little bit shaky, but unlike Ross, he has a pretty solid base and speed to make up for it. Okay, so I either do it for Ross or for Garrick. I get the feeling that Ross is going to be slightly more reliable in this situation, so I might as well go for Ross here. Yet more Teddy's dancing! And, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Ross one-shot at all of them. Oh, these Pegasus Knights are an embarrassment. A complete embarrassment. And I kind of want these ones to attack Tana, not Ainz, so I'm going to just leave Ainz there. Now, Erica can't even attack anybody. Now, that's just brilliant. You have 15 speed, which is actually pretty good for what you are. That terrible Falcon Knight could learn from you. I may actually need to kill this guy with Seth, actually. Just said actually twice. Kind of a verbal thing for me sometimes. Okay, now we can actually fight the Ranger. Although... Con not, yeah, no, you're not being weighed down by that, so I don't think Fran's gonna double you regardless. Nope, no doubling. Definitely no doubling. I can at least try and hit you with this. Yeah. Well, good thing this ranger doesn't have a sword, so we don't get to see the horrendously bad ranger sword animation in this game. I'm really serious. The ranger sword animation in this game looks like an just an amateur... It's really, really terrible. Huh. You do have javelins, though. But you will probably barely even scratch her. I don't want to speak too soon, though. So hopefully the Axe Reaver here should negate the enormous evasion these guys are getting from the peaks. 
because the Axe Reaver is just ridiculous in how much it doubles the Weapon Triangle. Well, I mean, how much it doubles the Weapon Triangle, that's a bit of a weird statement, but it doubles the Weapon Triangle and it does enormous, enormous amounts of accuracy and, uh, it doubles the Weapon Triangle. Let's just leave it at that. I see what you're trying to do there. You know what? If you guys attack with the Javelin, you have 13 attack power against Naomi's three defense! Okay, nope, that's still a bad idea. I also need to make sure that she's not in range of that Ballista. Looks like these walls must be Pegasus proof as well. I really don't know how they do it, but... They're somehow able to make walls that Pegasi can't fly over. Guess I can try putting Joshua there. Just don't want Natasha getting attacked. Don't need to worry too much though. Like I said, these are the worst Pegasus Knights in existence. I mean, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think even Marissa could probably stand a decent chance of fighting them. But, like I said, I don't want to speak too soon. She's kind of weak for this point, and I might want to just keep her a little bit away. Marissa is a pretty cool character. I like her character a lot, and I sometimes end up using her, even though she is pretty much just an inferior Joshua. I mainly like using her as an assassin, though. Usually because Joshua tends to go Swordmaster. Hello, you did exactly what I thought you would do, which is great. And you get finished off, which is good. Now I just need to take out that ranger. And let's what? Zero! <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that hit rate is not the best. And we and you hit doubles. <laughs> yeah, the weapon triangle doubling effect is pretty crazy. And Amelia's already the B at Lancers. You're still obsessed with loot. And I don't think you're ever going to hit her. Don't want to speak too soon, but still. Two damage! Unfortunately, you actually hit. That's much more. But you missed anyway. And you're now in range for me to finish you off with some people. And that's also much more, and that one actually hit. Okay, let's just quickly get rid of these guys, because I'm running out of things to... S uh, don't go on a mountain, you stupid jerk. Okay, let's could potentially do that. Once again, the worst Pegasus Knights in the history of existence. You get one rounded by a mage. This is just this episode is just a string of you know you're a bad Pegasus Knight when. But seriously, getting one rounded by a mage as a Pegasus Knight is incredibly embarrassing. Just need to take out a couple of these, though. Well, that's helpful. Hey, Naomi actually did something somewhat useful. Was kind of wanting her to get one of the ballistas, but that never seems to have happened. Problem is, there is a second one up there. And I can't really afford to move loot off this mountain. So I'm going to have... Once again, you know you're a bad Pegasus Knight when you get doubled by Kyle. Yeah, let's just put you out of your misery. You guys are all terrible. You guys are terrible, and, um... I had a feeling that would miss. Okay, so question, how much is your range? She is safe here, and she always hits. This is... Probably not going to be a risk at all. Okay, very soon I'll be able to enter that that town. This map is kind of interesting how it's a combination of both a town map and a normal map. Ugh, well, that was everything except speed, which I admit is pretty decent, but still, wow, loot your speed is not being that good for me in this run. 
also I need to get Colin away from that stupid Pegasus Knight. I need to get Natasha away from it too. Let's just continue to build up some support and like I said, get Colm away from that Pegasus Knight. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I don't like this at all. I mean, that's not bad, and in fact, if I box you in, you won't be able to do anything because you've only got a bow. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this, probably, even though this could easily miss. Well, it didn't miss, but I think that's one damage off Erica being able to finish you off. 21 hits. Uh, mountains are annoying. I mean, Franz won't die if I do that, at least, but it's still kind of annoying. This is not going to end well. Yeah, of course that missed. Well, you missed too, at least. Like I said, be thankful you're not seeing the Ranger Sword animation here, because it is terrible. It is incredibly awful. Like, just... What were the animators thinking when they made that? And yes, you are stuck now. Bad news is he's stuck on a mountain. Am I able to... Yes, I am. Okay, I can get Tana back to the front by doing this. Or not. Or I have to do this. And if I want to get Tana danced for, I have to do this. Good, you didn't miss. So, let's get you back there. I want to get Garrick up to the front lines too. Oh yeah, I just realized something. So, even though this is a bit of a waste of experience, because I don't think I'll be using Irons in this run, I want Irons to fight the boss. Because Ainz versus Pablo is possibly one of my favourite boss conversations in all of Fire Emblem. And I really want to show that off. Uh, let's go and uh, have you grab him. Uh, how much range do you have? Not that much. I might want to try showing off, even though I'm probably not going to be using Marissa, I might want to grind her support with Garrick, because uh, I like Garrick and Marissa. That conversation that I was talking about with Teddy, she mentions how, um, oh, I don't want to spoil it, it's pretty good though. But yeah, it's part of the whole Garrick and Marissa thing. Which personally I do like as a pairing more than Garrick and, uh, and, uh, Teddy's, right. That was kind of uh, dumb that I forgot a name for a second there. I thought you'd do that. Well, this is probably going to miss too. Yeah, of course it did. The adventure of the stupid ranger on a mountain that we are trying to hit but can't. I didn't even need to do that. You're already in rapier kill range. Okay, this... There we go, good. At least that's... I just realised Erica needs to see this. I need to grab her and run now. Oh well, her decent stats are at least getting somewhat better, but still having 8 strength now is not good. Yeah, let's get Erica up here. And I'm just going to let Amelia handle these two with her Axe Reaver. As for you... I suppose, I mean, I guess technically speaking, Amelia is the one who needs the experience more. Okay, that ballista is annoying, but it might be t about time to open the gate soon. You've got the, yeah, you still have the key. Or, I could just bombard you from over the gate and there's nothing you can do about it. You are in ballista range, admittedly. But that's nothing a little healing loot can't fix. I don't think she's going to be one-shot. I shouldn't have said that. 
at all. I should not have said that at all. Forget I ever said that, that never happened. There's something else that I could say here, but I also really, really don't want to tempt fate. It's about the type of ballista that I'm not sure that is, but if it is what I think it is, that would be really terrible. Four defense. 16 attack power. Actually, I can easily tell by our crit rate, which is three, so obviously that's not a killer ballista. Also, that guy has a longbow. Like, it really matters. No, if, if you can stand next to Natasha, you will do it. Alright, I need to swipe a red gem from one of these guys. That guy. It's going to be a little bit tricky to do. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. You're not in range. Uh, I think I'll be opening that door next turn. Well, I guess you have the lower movement, so I'll let you uh, be Dancer Leapfrogged here. Though I kind of doubt these three are going to play any further role in this chapter, especially with those ballistas around. Tana's not going to want to get close to them. Over there, you will uh, grab Ainz and continue the chain of bringing him over here. And these guys will continue the chain of being, well, not quite destroyed, because this guy seems to have a little bit more defense. I mean, this is kind of a waste of an Axe Reaver, but it's funny. I'd like a little bit more strength, but admittedly that growth of hers did get nerfed in the, uh, hi there. And miss. That growth of hers did get nerfed in the English version, so it's kind of understandable she doesn't have that much strength. And you will conveniently throw your Lance Reaver over the wall for me to grab. There it is. This is also going to be, uh, nine. Now, whether or not to give that to Garrick or Joshua. See, I now have two pretty cool, uh, sword users that I need to balance between using. Alright, let's just finish you off. That was bound to happen sooner or later. Okay, if Colum unlocks that door, he won't be in ballista range, but loot will be in chopping range of that guy. Uh, as annoying as it seems, I might actually have to hold off another turn. You know, it feels like a weird thing to wish for this, but I kind of wish that Pablo had a long-range tome. It'd just add a little bit of another interesting layer to this chapter. It just really feels like he could have quite easily have one. Uh, let's just put you down. And try and maybe get the support there. And Franz will continue on. Uh, I guess we can drop off Erica now. And everyone else will just keep building supports. So at this point, there's really nothing else left but to storm Pablo's encampment, personally. We could have done this much earlier, but I just wanted to clean up the rest of the map first. So now that door is completely safe to open. That thing should be getting close to running out of ammo, actually. Oh, it has! Because, yeah, the range is gone. That thing's run out of ammo. So I only need to worry about the range of that ballista. Okay, let's open this door. Watch out for you. And watch out for that other ballista there. And be careful that that guy doesn't just destroy himself. I suppose I can just have Franz go up here and barricade this. Of course, Pablo's not going to move. And 
and you're not going to move because you're stuck. I suppose I can visit this house, I guess. None of these houses have any items, but they basically just have a little bit of extra story to them. The map already explained that, though. <laughs> Alright, so... That wall is still Pegasus-proof. Erica over here. And then if I heal Kyle... I mean, I'm not sure I'll be actually using Kyle to fight off these enemies. But yeah, this chapter is almost done. We just pretty much have Pablo's amazing boss conversation with Irons to go. Oh, right. Irons also needs a bit of healing. Actually. No, wait. That won't work. Oh, Garrick definitely needs healing as well. There's a lot of... Actually, everyone from the lower front needs healing because I didn't have any healers down there. That makes perfect sense. I guess while I'm at it, I can show another house visit conversation. Oh, yes, that is what you think it is, by the way. There's an arena in here. And if you're on Erica's route, this is the last arena in the game. Yeah, there really aren't that many. Yeah, definitely not. That actually sounds pretty terrifying now that I think about it. Oh, great, my dance is this far away from the main front. That's bad. I'd hoped you missed. That's good. Now I just want to get rid of you and then take out the ballistas. Or they could take themselves out by being stupid like that and moving off the ballista. Great, you did my job for me. So, yeah, that kind of just happened, and that made my work a lot easier. Okay, if I am going to move Tana there, I will need to get rid of both archers this turn. Which might actually not be easy. So let's just take you out now. That be... yeah, that's 15. And skill. This is actually not a good idea, because there's that guy still. Said I wasn't going to really use Carl that much here, and I guess I am going to need to. Getting rid of the longbow guy should help in the long... That was not meant to be a pun, but it should help. And we get that longbow. Which is pretty nice. Okay, that guy could jump back in the ballista. Gotta watch out for the potential of that happening. Don't think we visited that house yet. So might as well try. Yeah, we haven't. That's all we're trying to do. But... Yeah, so, uh, that elder guy. Well, we should at least be thankful that his money obviously didn't hire him the best Pegasus Knights. Almost there with Eins. We'd put Amelia in the arena if I wanted to, which might not be a bad idea, but uh, it might also end terribly, so not really sure whether I'll do that or not. And then Garrick is quite badly hurt. And there isn't really anywhere for you to go at this point. I'd like time to get a bit more experience. I mean, like, even Amelia has overtaken her at this point, but I just... Ballista needs to go. Oh, yeah, and Colum, right. I 
the Melissa's not going to one-shot Colum. So I think I can safely move him as far as I need to. Don't put him in the arena, though. That'd probably end very badly. So at this point, Pablo's probably terrified. Because he's got this enormous army. Ru really? 85, really. And you're still just standing there. But, you did move... Uh, okay, this is actually going to be tricky. Because that guy is the one that I need to steal from. And, because of these Pegasus-proof walls here, me actually doing this while keeping Colm safe is going to be difficult. Like, what I'd like to do is get rid of you, but... And you don't have your javelin anymore. Actually, let me try something. Franz does have his. He needs to hit both times. Oh. Okay, I need to make sure the Iron Blade is the one that he'll equip after it as well. Because that means that he won't actually one round that guy. This is Operation Get the Red Gem. So Javelin broke, he'll be equipping the Iron Blade now, and that means that he won't actually be able to finish this guy off. Which means I'll be able to safely rob him next turn, and uh, that's all well and good. Get you in position to eventually seize. How many turns does it mean? Let me just check. 14. It's not as high as I thought it would be, actually. And with the archers gone, Tana can fly in. And now I'm going to go ahead and heal Garrick because he really needs it. You'll probably already know by now, but I'm definitely going to be splitting this chapter into two parts now. Because, yeah, this is a pretty long one. Everyone else is kind of bottlenecked. But I can use this time to get some supports up. Okay, time for Operation Get the Red Gem. Good, Franz didn't critical. That is amazing. Because now I can grab that red gem. Oh, and you ranked up your swords too. C and B. Pretty nice. So... 14 speed. How much speed do you have? Okay, you have 14. That's fine. And inventory. Okay, you have a free inventory. Good. All the things that would stop me from getting the red gem have been taken care of. So, yoink time. There's the red gem. Didn't get the talisman, but uh, still. Hmm. Uh, actually, Tana's going to be better for, fight for getting the kill here. Because she needs the experience a bit more. And I thought it would be a level up. Nice. She's a little behind the rest of us, but she will catch up. And yeah, that strength gets high pretty quickly with Tana. Actually. Oh. I don't like that 1% crit. This is going to sound crazy, but do I have a goddess icon in my convoy? I don't think I do. I think I have to risk the 1% crit. Oh no. I wonder if- do I still get the conversation if I attack him with a ballista? I'm gonna find out. Let's see if I still get the conversation if I use a ballista. And none of them will kill a ballista anyway. Let's see if we get it. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is it. Also, we'll be having unfitting music playing over it. Yep. That boss got- and that was completely anticlimactic, but yes, I love that boss conversation. That is one of my favourite boss conversations in all of the entire series. It's just so amazing. 
Ah, oh, I love that one so much. It's only matched by a couple of ones from Radiant Dawn, I guess, but that was... Yes, I love that boss conversation. So, let's focus on making Pablo pay for his expensive mistake. Which was... Well, actually, his second expensive mistake. The first was hiring those Pegasus Knights. The second is now. And yeah, Natasha's stats are looking pretty great for this point. I mean, she's not really going to be able to use them yet, but give her time. Oh, you can't go next to Garrick. Thing is, though, Pablo is actually pretty strong, so... And only one person can attack him at a time, because, like, yep, this is uh, also Pegasus-proof. And you have an oddly high... Oh, right, that's because Divine has 10 crit. And yeah, you will kill with a crit. That is very annoying. Well, I suppose I can try this again. Ha <laughs> ah, we're getting the normal conversation! That's also actually not a bad conversation. You still have 1% crit! Huh. I really, really don't like Pablo. Actually, I can test something now. Can Erica use the Sham Shear? Yes, she can! I don't like the 1% crit rate there, though. I've had bad experience with that in the past. Oh, by the way, Ross, here, have a Killer Axe. Oh, I suppose I can kind of replace that hat. Well, you know what, let's replace the hammer because you're not going to be using it now. That's also a bad idea. Uh, do I go for Erica with the Shams here and risk the 1% critical? I might just go ahead and do that, actually. It's even got better power than the... Uh... Oh, please don't end badly. Please don't end badly. Also heal friends and uh, get him back into the fray. Oh, I hope this doesn't end badly. Should probably get Seth on the scene, just in case we need him. Okay. Thank you for not criticaling. Thank you for criticaling. Thank you for criticaling again. Wasn't a kill, but uh, that's the power of the Shamshir. And here we have a problem, because I like Erica staying there so that I can potentially get... Uh, the C is if I manage to hit this guy, but the problem with that is... Oh, actually, she can go here. Although that's a 3% crit rate. I'm just terrified of the prospect of that happening. Ross, on the other hand, there's no chance of a crit at all. And Irons could try and make good on his boast. Get experience, but risk a 3% crit rate. Do I go for it or not? Do I risk this? I really, really don't... Ugh! I mean, 46 is going to probably miss anyway. Let's just try this. Oh, he didn't live up to his awesome quote. Sixteen. Nah, two hits from that is exactly enough to kill him. Oh, this is going to prevent me from repairing the hatchet later, but if he does hit with this... If he misses, though, I need to quickly finish him off, because otherwise I'm in serious trouble. But uh, if Ross does hit with that... I mean, he doesn't really need experience, though. So your total crit is 15. Okay, let's just quickly try something. Where's Kyle? He's all the way down here. But I can still give that sword to Garrick. Though, I'm going to actually give the iron one and not the steel. And you're going to, unfortunately, have to move away. I'm going to do this just because, in case we fail this. Ah, oh, 
se oh, is that seven crit as well? And that's only a 77. Oh, I believe in Garrick's awesomeness. Thank you. So, Pablo doesn't actually die here. He just retreats. And, depending on how things go in a later chapter, this might be the last you ever see of Pablo. It's weird, but that's just how it works. And, hey, another item to promote our mages. So with that, unless we want to do some arena action, which I guess I could try and do if I wanted to, but I don't think I will need it. Like I say, the tower is much safer than the arena. And Eric is in position to seize. But let's just get a little bit of experience for an attack. And let's do it. Let's, let's get a bit with Joshua. And then we seize. Well, boy, I've been recording for almost an hour and 30 minutes. I'm definitely splitting this chapter in two parts. So, it's over. Meanwhile... Good thing we seized it then. Don't worry, there's no turn limit. There's no time when Volta will arrive or anything like that. But, uh... Yeah, Volta was here. Oh, great. Yeah, this guy is horrible. <laughs> Seriously, every word out of this guy's mouth just makes you want to punch him more. Meanwhile, though, we've saved the Council of Elders and the Prince. So, Irons and his mercenaries automatically join at the end of the chapter, provided that they're still alive. Something that I've also read, and this is kind of interesting, is that if either Garrick or Tethys dies at any point in this chapter, the other will leave the party after it's over. I've never tested that, but according to Serenade's Forest, that's what happens. But anyway, we've saved Klimt. One of the elders who's not supporting Grado. No, no, he isn't. Yeah, he hates Pablo. No, just one jerk. And then he attempted a hostile takeover. This is kind of funny, I've been watching a few Disgaea speedruns recently, and this sounds like exactly what you do if you don't get a build passed in that game. Yeah, that's actually pretty dark. Yeah, good thing you had a good hiding spot. Oh, there's still you. So I guess we do... We have half an ally. That's good too, and let's hope that the rest of Fralia can... Uh, Joseph Carquino can sign with Fralia. Well, as long as they're uh, those Pegasus Knights, we don't have anything to worry about. And now these, these people get to talk. Yes, please stay, please stay. Both of you are amazing. <laughs> Thankfully the pay doesn't come out of our funds, it comes out of Prince Eins' invisible pockets. I think this is some pretty great dialogue. <laughs> yes, INT is capable of being nice at some points. And we're meeting a new character. And she didn't mention you in, in her dialogue before, but yeah, that's her brother. There are a lot of characters in this game that are connected. Oh, you might someday. Oh, he's a magic user. Just don't burn down this entire village by accident. Maybe, but... Uh, here's the thing. 
he's not officially in our party yet. It's kind of weird. He's just going to be tagging along for a couple of chapters. Maybe, but... We need to reach Jahana. We have to get there pretty soon. Because Kalark's on his way. And we know what he did to Fralia. And this is our only way to get to Rouston as well. Luckily, the brother of one of the people who just joined us happens to know a path that'll let us avoid the mercenaries. And there's a mountain village too. Where his teacher lives. Huh. We've heard that name before, haven't we? He was the one who was travelling with with uh, Murr earlier. Powerful Wielder of Magic has been fighting bandits and monsters, but not quite the ones that we fought back in Chapter 6, because in the beta version, he would have come and killed the boss there with a critical. This does sound trustworthy. So, that'll be our next destination. And there we end that incredibly long chapter. So, next time, we'll be actually having a bit of a filler chapter, unfortunately. Yeah, the next chapter is one of the few in the entire game that I find to be pure filler. But, yeah. So, see you then. It's also Fog of War, so it's annoying for two reasons. Okay, I promised to show Teddy's recruiting Garrick, but since I haven't shown this either, I might as well show Ein's recruiting Teddy's. Okay, so that's actually the same line as with Garrick, but Ein's has a different uh, response to it. Here's the main one I wanted to show though Teddy's recruiting Garrick. It's a nice callback to our conversation at the start of the chapter. And this line is that interesting hint that I was talking about. Yeah, it shouldn't be hard to guess who those two are. I'll give you a hint, they both join in this chapter. That's actually kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure Teddy's was always a fortune teller. And yet, here's the better news. And that's all. So, yeah, I wanted to show that because I do like that conversation a lot better than Garrick recruiting Tevis.